one of the things I taught was study the last three days, the open, the high, the low, and the close, in the last three days. I want to take your attention into this candle here, last Friday's low. So if this was Monday, go back the last three days, you go here, here, and here. Now, is there a fair value gap in that? No. But look what Monday's trading did. It opened, extended down, and closed near the low. It was a rather large range today. Okay, great, wonderful. What do you do with that information? Go back to the previous day's low. If you go back to the previous day's low, this is going to be important because if you do this, the next trading day, which is Tuesday, if we open up, and because we're below those relative equal lows on the daily chart, and we're below this swing low also, we're now you know, in a deep discount. We don't try to pick bottoms. Okay, We don't try to call the long-term lows while markets are bearish. You don't need to do that. Okay. So now think about what this bias has been. Now this looks like an indecisive day. So if you're looking at a daily chart, it can be a little confusing. Like, you know, what took place? This is a, a mixed day, they'll call it. No. Let's go into this formation right here. Okay, I'm going to give you some logic. I want you to look at this price action and this fractal. Now what is a fractal? A fractal is a piece of price action that's doing something that I'm trying to draw your attention to. Okay, we're studying a very small segment of price action. That's a fractal. So if we're looking at this, and this is that old low that I extend on the daily chart, I want you to think about what you see here. Pause the video. All right, so let's add some detail first. In perspective, you want to break your daily ranges up by the day. And I taught that midnight starts to cross over to a new day. At midnight here on Tuesday, we start here. The opening price is here. And if you draw that out in time, it goes up, it goes down, and it comes right back to the close to where it opened up at midnight. And it would get very close to what that daily chart showed, that indecisive candle, where it was a lot of wick to the upside, a little bit of wick down to the downside, and a small little body. Okay, That looks indecisive on that time frame. But if you look closer and you start framing out the things I've taught you, here is relative equal highs, old low. What's resting above relative equal highs? Buy side liquidity. What's resting below an old low? Sell side liquidity. The market runs above at 930. It hits that old low, that red line here, that old low. It hits that there right at 930. Then all of the buy side is purged. That means all of these buy stops have now been drug into the market by their hair. Kicking and screaming, they're in. They're caught long or they've been short and they've been knocked out of their short position. Either way, it doesn't matter to us. We just know that that buy side liquidity is likely to be utilized to set up an idea for smart money to be short. Why? Because the bias is bearish. We have not changed gears. We're not trying to pick the bottom. So if we're doing this like smart money and we're looking at the market like this and we want to be short up here at this trigger event, which we'll look at in a moment, where would you want to offset that short position? Well, you have a nice little short term low here, so you can take partial below that. It hits it beautifully and the previous day's low and it does that run below that low here just as handsomely as it did here so let's go in and use the logic with this idea of rebalancing monday's daily range keying off of this level here notice that the buy side liquidity is ran first this is really important folks if we would have gone down and took the previous low out then ran up here that to me is not bearish this running above buy side liquidity here at 930, hitting that without having this low taken out, that is bearish because it's within the context of the bias that we're looking for. When we're operating in the, a bearish bias, what we're essentially saying is the market's going to go up to a premium for one of two reasons. Run an old high or highs to take out buy side liquidity. So that way smart money can counterparty with them with their short positions. They're going to sell to those buy stops then seeking to buy cheaper sell side liquidity. That would be their pool of liquidity to offset, distribute their shorts below here. So they're going to sell here at a high price and buy it back at a cheaper price. The second pool of liquidity is the sell side liquidity. So it runs the buy side first with the bearish bias, then seeks a discount. Now we're going to drop into a 15 minute time frame. Zoom on in and get a little bit more details here. And now I have added the 830 and we have the relative equal highs. The market at 8.30, we're looking for what to happen, the news embargo to lift. That means that the algorithm will start seeking liquidity as early as that time frame. Now, it might wait till 9.30, 
and this candle here is 9.30. Notice it hits it right there where we're drawing your attention to because it's rebalancing that entire Monday range. It's going back to the previous day prior to Monday, it's old low on Friday. So when you see that, it rebalances the big drop on Monday. It tricks people into thinking that it's made the low and it's going to keep going up. When the only thing it has done is it's gone up to a logical level on that daily time frame that rebalances all of that sell-off on Monday. It's been rebalanced. So if you look at the ninth on the 15-minute time frame, this does not look like it's an imbalance. But on the daily candle, it's a large down day. So all of this movement here is big in terms of distribution on the downside. This is a retracement back up into a logical level, which is Friday's low, and it hits it based on the elements that I taught you. Look for relative equal highs. At 8.30, it's gonna start looking for high or highs to run. That's these over here. How far can it go? That's that Friday low. There's your framework. This is that Judas swing, that fake rally up, okay? Think about what the daily candle looked like before we just start dropping down in lower time frames. It was a big wick up and a little bit of a wick down, but it was a small little body on the candle for Tuesday's trading. But if you look at it from the lens of power three, how I teach you the accumulation at 8.30, use the opening price that's down here, draw that out in time. The rally should take place above that, hits a logical level I'm teaching you. Then it creates the pattern that's in the mentorship, fair value gap, market structure shift, then it starts to show displacement and distribution to the downside attacking a discount array. So you have to understand what you're looking at relative to time and price. When you do that, it takes away all that confusion. It provides more clarity. Midnight New York, news embargo at 8.30 is lifted. Now there wasn't a whole lot of news this morning, admittedly, but this, still the same logic, relative equal highs at 8.30 starts the algorithm. What's it gonna do? It's gonna run for a premium. Why? Because the bias is bearish. It's gonna return likely up into that Friday low to rebalance Monday's trading. It's bearish candle was being rebalanced. And at 9.30 a.m., the equity market opens. That's what this little manipulation is, okay? What is 9.30? That's when you expect this little type of a move. But it begins at 8.30. So that hour long interval, we're expecting when we're bearish, a run higher to set up shorts. Now, the short can form inside that hour, or it could just provide the leg that sets up the framework that will eventually, like I'm gonna show you here, provide you the setup. So all, all of it is a matter of studying what the market's providing you. It doesn't change the rules, I'm not bending the rules, I'm giving you the logic behind when these algorithms do what they're doing. When price starts to spool from 8.30 up into Friday's low, at 9.30, that's that manipulation time where they create that little opportunity where it looks like it's going to do something but it's generally the opposite of what it looks like on the chart in other words retail is going to see that as it's breaking out it's going higher and they're going to want to buy it and chase it and then they have their hinder parts handed to them and then they just run the daily range against them to take out the sell side over here okay but i want you to look inside this five minute run here and notice that this whole area is shaded here, that's the Judas swing. That's the fake rally in a down move that will be profitable for shorts. But I want you to go into that range here. This right here, that is your displacement price swing. That right there, that's the leg on a five minute chart. You strip that down and you start going from five, four, three, two, and one until you find your fair value gap. So this price swing here, you shade that while you're learning, and then you start breaking that down into the lower time frames. So right now we're on the five minute chart. I want to keep this shaded area here on, but we're just going to transition from the five minute chart down to the four minute chart. So here's the four minute chart. 9.30 is this candle here. That's your Judas swing. At 8.30 it starts its run. This is the algorithmic price run. Goes to Friday's low, rebalances the entire range on Monday's trading. It changes the narrative when retail traders thinking it's created the low. All the bullish diversions they would be seeing on their indicators and such, they're, they're screaming to buy. And breakout artists are looking at this break here because they think this is resistance broken now. Oh, it's coming back down to it. This is, what is this? Resistance broken turns support, right? Okay, it breaks down a little bit. Okay, then it starts to run. Okay, well, this is one of those instances where it was, you know, went past a little bit, but it's still going to go higher. You can, you can almost read into the price action what retail would be expecting here. But we're looking for something very specific. 
in this shaded area here, we're looking for a fair value gap. Do you see a fair value gap? Some of you would say this. Why not that one? What, if ha what would happen if I went into that and sold short? Well, first of all, if you did that, you were not following the rules because from this high down to that low, this is equilibrium. We need to get to a premium. We don't want to sell in a discount. That's not what we're doing here. So we have to get to this level here, 40, 44 and a half or higher. That's a premium based on that price swing. So there's no four minute fair value gap. On the three minute chart, inside this pink shaded area, that's the displacement leg, is there a fair value gap? There is no fair value gap here either. Nothing to do yet. So you drop down into your two minute chart. Okay, do you see a fair value gap in the two minute chart? Lo and behold, the unicorn. Here's the fair value gap. Small little imbalance right in here. And we took out the short term low. Now, some of you might see this if you were watching the two minute chart. Okay. Say you watched the two minute chart and you saw this short term low broken here, or maybe this one here, and you saw this. Is this displacement? One could argue, perhaps it is. Okay, now I'm going to give you the alternative. This is not twisting the rules, it's just showing you the logic of when you put a trade on in your demo account. Hear that? Compliance. This movement lower creates that fair value gap. Yes, we have a short term low taken out there. Okay. This entry on this fair value gap, if you utilize that, where would your stop loss be? It would have to be at least above the candle that creates the fair value gap. That's this one here. So your stop will be above here. Did it hit it? No. So even if you would have utilized that, you're not stopped out with this run here. Now, you might get scared to death when it running up after it moved in your favor like this and then comes back and retraces. But you cannot, listen to me folks, you cannot open a trade up like this and put a stop above here and watch it go down here and want to trail your stop loss real tight. You can't do that. You have to hold with a certain measure of risk open. Initially when it opens the trade up, the rule is you want to use the candle that creates the fair value gap that high just above that. Okay, one tick, two ticks above that. That's sufficient enough. If you are scared and you just want to use a, a nice, handsome, ample stop, you would use a swing high here. Oh, that's a lot of movement. So what? Once you place your stop here or here, when do you start moving your stop? Well, you want to see a larger shift in structure. When this low is taken out down here, then you can move your stop down. Say it was up here, then you can move it to here. Okay? Or maybe here. Why? because it's already broke down. So it's not going to go down here and come back up here. If it does, then you're probably wrong. Or it's going to consolidate, which means it's going to be an ugly condition to be working within anyway. See the logic there? I'm accepting the fact that I'm probably going to be wrong if it stops me out, but who cares if it does? Why would I have that opinion of not caring if it stops me out? How many times have you seen this pattern form? 